It's officially spooky season and what's more synonymous with Halloween than the Halloween franchise? That's why I decided to do my first ever tier ranking video on the Halloween franchise. There are 13 horror movies in the Halloween franchise, all ranging in quality, especially with the masks. The franchise began in 1978 with John Carpenter's classic Halloween. This centers on a group of babysitters who are stalked by a masked killer named Michael Myers on Halloween night. As the story evolves through the franchise, we learn that Laurie Strode, the babysitter in the first film, is actually Michael Myers' sister. Over the course of the franchise, other family members were pulled into the story, cults were involved. Then in 2018, director David Gordon Green retconned everything that happened after the original Halloween so that Michael Myers and Laurie Strode weren't actually related at all. Although the storyline becomes a little murky with each entry in the series, overall the Halloween franchise is one of my favorites. Michael Myers and Freddy Krueger are my top two horror villains. Michael Myers, he was so creepy, so unstoppable, and he actually felt like an actual monster. With Freddy, he was kind of more comedic over time, and yes, he was still terrifying, but there was a quality about him that you knew you could defeat him. Michael Myers just felt like this evil force that no one could take down. I think that the Halloween franchise is essential for the Halloween season. Each one is different in quality, but overall I think they're fun and entertaining. So let's dive into my full ranking and thoughts on each film in the franchise. Let's see how it stacks up to your ranking. So as you can see here, I did create category names for each category and essentially they're all lines taken from the Halloween franchise. Franchise. Do they all make sense? No, but I tried to be creative and it's hard, okay? So the first one is just classic. It's a Halloween classic. It's the best of the best. Second tier is Evil Doesn't Die, It Changes Shape, and that's more of movies that I think were good. They took the original story and they evolved it and made it their own, which I think is pretty cool. And then we have See Anything You Like, which is more of like the average category. They're good, average, entertaining watches. Then we have One Good Scare, which I think is just above being absolutely terrible. I think they have one or two things in there that I really enjoyed about the film and I think are not complete dog shit. The last one we have Purely and Simply Evil, which speaks for itself. It's a trash horror movie and trash Michael Myers movie, and it should be given the Bob treatment, if you ask me. I hate Bob, by the way. Okay, so we're just gonna get started and do the original Halloween first, to get that off the bat. We have Halloween, it's a classic, there's no question about it. This is the one that set off the franchise, it created Michael Myers, the horror villain we know and love today. I feel like, although this wasn't technically the first horror slasher, this is what set off the slasher craze. Like, we wouldn't have Friday the 13th or A Nightmare on Elm Street without Michael Myers and Halloween. And there's just so much to love about this movie. It's simple but effective. The music is incredible. The cinematography, the characters that they created. It's just overall the perfect Halloween movie and I love it. And we have Halloween 4, which I am putting in Halloween classic. Halloween 4 is the one I watched the most growing up as a kid. I loved it so much. It was always on AMC Fear Fest. That was always the one that I would catch on TV. And when I grew up watching it, I was like the same age as Jamie, the main character. Jamie Lloyd is Michael Myers' niece. She's Laurie Strode's daughter. Laurie's dead. She is living with her adoptive family and Michael Myers comes back act together. I love Jamie Lloyd. I think she's so, she's such a good actress. Daniel Harris is such a good actress in this. I love the vibes in this. I think it has, it captures that perfect Halloween vibe. I also love Rachel, Jamie's sister in this. I think she's fantastic and I love her relationship with Jamie and I love seeing them bond. I think this one had some really cool moments and the whole final act of the film is really great and the final moments of this film are terrifying. So I don't know. I love this one just as much as the original. Maybe even more than the original. Then we have Halloween 5, which I'm gonna put in one good scare. I used to love Halloween 5 so much growing up because, you know, it's basically Halloween 4 but repackaged with a new sister. So Jamie Lloyd is back in this one, but she's like mute and she has psychic connections to Michael Myers. And Rachel, her sister, is murdered 
within the first like five minutes in the movie so we're introduced to her wild and crazy best friend who is the protagonist in this one first of all i hate that they killed rachel in the intro because rachel was one of the strongest characters in this franchise and i'm just sad that they had to kill her i think it's because the actress didn't want to do it whatever but did they have to kill her in such a horrible way and i feel like this one they don't really explain jamie's telekinetic powers or like her connection to michael and there's also no real explanation of what happened at the end of the fourth film and it's just weird and cringy mask is bad but honestly i wasn't that mess i wasn't mad about the masks growing up because i didn't know any better i was just excited to be getting a new michael myers movie so yeah when i was younger i used to love this but over time i started to look at it differently now as an adult i realize it's not really that good and i didn't like the new character that we're following and that we're supposed to care for she i don't get i don't like it okay but i did like that they brought back jamie so okay then we have halloween h2o which i'm gonna rank as a halloween classic look i love this one it's the first halloween movie that i got to see in a movie theater it came out in like 98 i think and i got to see it with my mom it has josh hartnett and i think this one rebooted the halloween Lori michael storyline better than how they did it in 2018 i think that it follows Lori years after she faked her own death. They kind of retconned the Jamie Lloyd story, which I didn't, I don't really like that. And she has a son played by Josh Hartnett in his first movie. And it's set at this boarding school and Michael Myers is on the hunt for her on Halloween and he finds her. I think this one really fun and entertaining. It was basically a reboot and it kind of came off the heels of Scream and it was focusing on this new group of teens and Michael killing them. I thought it had some interesting deaths. I like LL Cool J and I love the ending. I thought the ending was the perfect conclusion to the story and I wish they had just kept it like that. But the next movie ruined everything about this one. So overall, I love it though. I love it so much. And then we have Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. I'm gonna put this in, <laughs> this is gonna surprise some people, see anything you like because I like this one a lot actually. I This is another one I grew up watching a lot because it was on AMC Fear Fest. So this is centered after the events of the fifth one, obviously. Jamie Lloyd is killed off, is killed off giving birth, and then there's like this weird cult that's pulled into into play. And Paul Rudd is playing an older Tommy. I think, yes, the story is crazy. I think it's the last appearance of Loomis. There's a lot of wacky stuff that's happening. And I know there's a lot of stuff that happened behind the scenes with this one. So it isn't, like, I think the studios messed with this movie a lot. So we didn't really get the director's vision or something. But honestly, I love the vibes. I love the Halloween setting. I was just happy to have another Halloween movie. So I think over time, I've grown to appreciate it even more because of its wackiness and weirdness and Paul Rudd is great he he's what makes this movie then we have Halloween season of the witch which I'm gonna name Halloween classic I grew up not ever watching this one because it didn't have Michael Myers and it wasn't until years later where I heard people raving about it and I was like you know what fine I'm gonna give it a chance and I absolutely loved it I love that John Carpenter was trying to do this horror Halloween anthology with a new story set on Halloween I just think it probably would have worked better if they did it directly after the first one. I wish he just released this as its own thing because I think more people would have fallen in love with it. So this one is centered on this doctor who gets pulled into this weird mask conspiracy with this like mask maker in this little small California coastal town. This girl's father is killed and she thinks that this company is involved and Dr. Chalice wants to get it in so he decides to team up with her and follow her to this little community and investigate. This one has amazing vibes and atmosphere. It's super weird and I love the mask element and that it's this witchy group of witches that is trying to take over the world <laughs> on Halloween through these masks that are gonna like kill all these kids. I think it has some really cool brutal moments like one moment in particular a woman is playing with the mask and it kind of sets it off. That whole scene is absolutely terrifying. It's one of my favorites. I think Dr. Chalice is just so funny and ridiculous and Tom Atkins is great and I love watching him. What do you, what do you want to do, Dr. Chalice? Ugh, it's so cringy and gross, but also I love it and I get it. 
I get it. The masks are iconic. I love them so much. The theme song, you can't get it out of my head once it's in there. So yeah, there's lots to love about this and I wish more people would give it a chance. I think more people are. More people are coming around to it. Then we have Halloween Ends. Halloween Ends, I'm gonna shock myself and put it See Anything You Like. Look, I would have loved this movie so much more if it wasn't the last entry in the Laurie Strode Michael Myers saga. They built this whole film up to be like the final battle and Michael Myers doesn't show up until like 50 minutes into the film. That's when you piss me off, when he doesn't even show up and I'm following this little geek around. Like, no, okay? I don't give a fuck about Corey. I kind of do because he's kind of likable and I kind of want to see his relationship with Allison, but you got to give me some Michael in there. And look, I get it. They were trying to do something different, kind of go on the more season of the witch route, but that's not when you do it, David, okay? You don't do it then. You, you wait until you finish up this Laurie and Michael saga. I'm getting passionate about it and I didn't think I was that passionate about it. Honestly, it just, it made me mad because I was like, where's Michael? And then they made Michael this weak little bitch and Corey was able to just rip the mask off. And there was all this weird sexual energy between Corey and Michael. And I feel like I'm not the only one who felt that. Like the moment where Corey is looking at Michael through the glass while Michael is killing and he just puts his hand up and looks at him longingly. It felt like that moment in The Cable Guy where Jim Carrey pulls down his shirt and puts his nipple up against the glass and he's like, I love you. If this hadn't been the last entry in the series, I would have liked it so much more because I liked what they were doing with Corey's story. A new evil, like, yeah, cool. That would have been great to relaunch the series after this fight. I liked the stuff with Allison and I wanted to see more of her trauma and how this relationship was affecting her because I thought they were gonna do more into how Corey is changing her and maybe she takes an evil route. But they didn't do that. I will say I did like the ending. I like what happens. It's a little far-fetched and ridiculous, but I mean, we're talking about a guy who can't die and he's like, evil transcends, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I think it's average. It would have been better if it wasn't the final in this trilogy. I didn't hate it. Did I? I think I did. <laughs> the more I talk about it. Then we have Halloween 2018, which I'm gonna put in Evil Doesn't Die, It Changes Shape. I think Lori says that. I really liked it and I thought what David Gordon Green did was interesting. I liked that he took his own creative route to it and he retconned all the bullshit from the previous films after Halloween 1 and created his own mythos. I think that he made Michael violent again. I loved the look of Michael in this. The music was incredible. The Shape Stocks Allison is one of my favorite from that film, that soundtrack. It's incredible. It's so creepy and it gets under your skin. There were things I didn't like about it, like the whole podcaster storyline and the whole thing with the doctor was just weird. It didn't fit in with the rest of the story, but overall I liked it. I really liked Laurie's story and how she became this person who was traumatized by this event and how it ruined her life basically. And I really liked the character of Allison and overall I really liked it. I thought it was a good entry in the series. Now we're getting into some controversial feelings, I think, with Rob Zombie Halloween. I think I also ranked this as Evil Doesn't Die Changes Shape. You know what? I really like Rob Zombie's films. I think he has a specific aesthetic. When you see a Rob Zombie movie, you know it's a Rob Zombie movie. Yes, there's lots of swearing. It's more of a redneck version of events, but I still think he's bold with his choices and it feels like his own spin on things. So I like how he evolved this story he gave Michael Myers a backstory, which is a lot of people didn't like that because I think a lot of people like that he's this dangerous shape with an unknown past. We don't know why he's the way he is. But this, we get to see that he came from an abusive, dysfunctional childhood and family life and we can understand why he grew up to be the person he came to be. I think this one also presented Michael as super violent and vicious. He's terrifying in this. I think Tyler Maine did a fantastic job. Like the looks that he gives while wearing the mask, it looks like Michael Myers. It doesn't look like a person wearing a mask. It looks like this fucking monster. And I love how he did that and how he just picks people up and slams them down like rag dolls. Loved it. I think that 
Scout Tyler Compton is a great choice. Lori Strode, because she's got this sweetness, this innocence to her. I thought it was interesting that they brought back Daniel Harris as Annie. I thought their dynamic was a little weird and it felt a little forced. Like, they call ba they call each other baby a lot and I'm like, I've never called... I don't know. Maybe I'm just weird, but I don't speak to my friends that way. <laughs> Do I have friends? Ugh. That's questionable too. We have Halloween Kills. I am going to put this in one good scare. Halloween Kills, ugh, I love that it made Michael this unstoppable monster who's literally killing everybody in the town on Halloween night. Love that setup. And the kills are violent, they're vicious, and I love that the town is banding together to stop him. And we're introduced to legacy characters like Tommy, who is insufferable in this movie. How could they make him so unlikable? Is it the actor? Because I didn't think Anthony Michael Hall was that unlikable. And I love the whole vibe of this town and everything going crazy and that mob mentality aspect of it I thought was really cool and interesting. But there were so many moments in this that felt so weird. The tone felt off and weird. It felt really cringy and unintentionally funny at times. The whole Evil Dies Tonight thing was laughable, but I kind of get it. I don't know. There was like too much time spent on uh, scapegoating this other guy who wasn't Michael Myers. You think they couldn't tell who Michael Myers was? He doesn't look anything like that guy. There were cool kills in this, and that's about it for me. Sorry. Even oh, the whole like mob thing at the end, it was so weird to me. I was rooting for Tommy to die, honestly. I'm sweating. I'm getting mad thinking about it. But overall, I didn't think it was like the worst of the worst, okay? There was still some enjoyable stuff about it. Whew, but now we're getting into the worst of the worst with Halloween Resurrection, and that is purely and simply evil. You know what? I think this is the bottom of a lot of people's lists. And I will say, over time, I've grown to appreciate it more, and I don't think it's that bad. I think it was kind of ahead of its time with the whole live streaming thing in the haunted house, and I thought that aspect was cool. I love that this kid back home is watching the live stream and communicating to the people in the house to tell them what's happening. That was awesome. That was cool. I think the cast is interesting. The new final girl, I really liked her. I thought she was great. I don't like Tyra Banks and Busta Rhymes. I think that's the biggest flaw in this movie. And that whole battle between Busta Rhymes and Michael Myers, trick or treat motherfucker, is blasphemous. Like, why did you do that? They made Michael a joke. They unceremoniously killed off Laurie Strode in the beginning because I think Jamie Lee Curtis didn't want to do the movie. But they ruined the end of Halloween H2O. Like, come on. I don't like it, but I'll watch it. I'll still watch it. Halloween 2 is gonna go in Evil Doesn't Die, It Changes Shape. I love Halloween 2, and I love how it expanded on the mythos between Michael and Laurie. This is where we learn that Laurie Strode is Michael Myers' sister, and she was adopted or some shit. This one is set in a hospital, which I love. I love hospital set horror movies, or horror stories in general. Hospitals are inherently creepy. I worked in hospitals for years. There's just something about them that make you uneasy. The smells, the sounds, like the hollowness, the death. I love that it's decorated for Halloween. There's just this danger in this, and Laurie feels completely and totally alone in this, and I just love it. I love it, okay? I'm gonna say it. And then we have Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. I'm gonna rank it, see anything you like. I actually like this one. I know a lot of people hate it, but I love what they did with this story. The aftermath of the events of the first one on Lori, her PTSD, how she's living through all of this with Annie and how Annie is also dealing with it and how Sheriff Brackett is dealing with it. And I just thought it was really interesting. I thought that some of the choices Lori made didn't make sense, but I think that's like real life. People who go through that stuff do things that don't make sense. They put themselves into harmful situations. They pick up harmful habits and all that shit to cope. So I really loved all of that. And I like how it was this huge shock where we get to see Lori learn that she's Michael Myers' sister and how Sheriff Brackett comes into play there, and how Loomis is really like this piece of shit who's out for himself, and how 
he kind of became famous off of the events of the first one. So it's showing those two sides of the coin of what happened to these two individuals after this horrific tragic event. I love the opening scene of this movie. It's set in a hospital. I thought that's where the whole movie was gonna go so I was shocked. And it was really cool. It was badass. It had some awesome kills. Again, the kills in the Rob Zombie movies are brutal. I think Tyler Mayne is fantastic as Michael and I really liked it. So overall, yeah, that's my ranking. I feel like, honestly, I love all of the Halloween movies. The franchise is crazy, but it's entertaining, and we get those Halloween vibes with every movie. Everything doesn't always make sense, but I don't need it to make sense. It's Michael Myers and Halloween. And I think over time, my rankings and feelings on this can change. But overall, I don't really hate any of the movies. I think there's something to like about each of them, even Halloween Resurrection. And I didn't even look at this from a mask standpoint because I think that's a whole, a whole different other conversation. But honestly, when I watched these films growing up, I never really cared about the mask. I was like, oh, it's fine. It doesn't look the same as the original. The original one is obviously the best, but that wasn't what I cared about. I just, I'm easy to please, I guess is what I'm saying, and the masks didn't bother me. There is my ranking. Let me know how you would rank the Halloween movies in the comments below. Let me know what you think of my ranking, and please, be kind, be gentle on me. This is my first ever tier ranking video. I would love to do more of these. Let me know if you're interested in seeing that and what kind of tier ranking lists you want to see from me. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Happy Halloween.